breakfast. Burgers for breakfast. Burgers for breakfast. Burgers. Burgers for breakfast. Can we be in the vlog? Yes, sir, you know. Yeah. Yo. The man, the myth, the legend. Whoa, look at this production. Hey guys, how much am I allowed to talk about what we're doing here in my own video? Yeah. Nothing we're doing here is a big secret. Not okay. Right okay, great. Yeah. Burgers for breakfast. All right. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm doing here is, um, you know Hot Ones from First We Feast? Well, they have another show called The Burger Show and it's hosted by Alvin here. Alvin's like, Pretty much a big or the biggest deal chef there is. Oh my god. Started a restaurant called Egg Slut. Yep, yeah, Egg Slut, Venice, LA, Vegas, you name it. When does this come out? When does this episode come out? April. April? Tune in on April 9th. April on 9th. First We Feast YouTube channel. Bang. bang. Are, you gonna, are you gonna finish that? I don't think so. I don't know, maybe take a bite. So on Sunday or something like that, I found this fantastic article uh, in the New York Times and the headline reads, wealthy, successful, and miserable. The upper echelon is hoarding money and privilege to a degree not seen in decades, but that doesn't make them happy at work. It is a very, very interesting story article. It's about, it's about a lot of things, but they, they focus on like this one character that the journalist met at a reunion and this guy is miserable. He he is like a Harvard business school type who works in a hedge fund or something and this guy makes, this is the subject of this story, this guy makes 1.2 million dollars a year but the story is about how he is miserable at work. It was insanely stressful work done among people he didn't particularly like. He earned about $1.2 million a year and he hated going to the office. I feel like I'm wasting my life away, he told me. When I die, is anyone gonna care that I earned an extra percentage point of return? My work feels totally meaningless. And the story goes on, there's one part I really like where they talk about these uh, a janitor, like someone who mops floors and cleans out like bedpans that people pee in, janitor in a hospital and how that janitor did find fulfillment and happiness in their job because they felt like they had a, a, a purpose, like there was a greater good. I thought that, I think a, that's a very interesting thing. Okay, so I tweeted this article and there was kind of a lot of feedback in my Twitter thread. I think it was from people who just read the headline, but a lot of like really valid feedback that was like, oh boo hoo, poor millionaire is not happy. That was the sentiment, and I appreciate that. And I was thinking a lot about that. I was thinking about like that, that platitude, money won't solve your problems, or money won't solve all your problems. What a crock of shit. And I, I think I do have like a unique perspective on this because you know, I spent a, a good part of my life being very, very poor. I qualify very poor as like, Zero in my bank account, zero savings, zero safety net, nowhere I could turn to for money. And you know, there was definitely a time in my life when my, my son Owen was very small, where if I didn't get free diapers and milk and money from the government, I'm not sure I could have make, made ends meet as a, as a parent or as an individual. So when I say I, 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 there was a time in my life when I was poor, that's what it meant. That's kind of, that was me then. That's what my life looked like then. This is an apartment that I was very lucky to have. This is an apartment that I lived in with my kiddo and rent was 400 bucks a month. Um, lucky to have it, no complaints, but that was, in, in any event. And for the last decade, I've, I've had a lot of means. Like I, I make, you know, I make good money now. You guys see the absurd life that I get to live. I'm very lucky. So why does that idea, money won't solve your problems, why does that idea, why did that bother me so much when I was, when I was struggling in life? Why did so many people on Twitter get so upset by um, misinterpreting this headline. And the answer is that for most people who are broke, money will literally solve every one of your problems. Money will solve your problems. This idea that money won't solve problems, it's bullshit. When I was dirt poor, money would have solved every one of my problems. I was lucky not to have health issues or other, you get the idea, money would have solved all my problems. And I think that's why people 
respond to just this headline with such emotion is because it's like, it feels so tone deaf when you have nothing to hear this idea that money won't solve your problems. I thought about it further. Okay, ready? Rich or poor, we all face these problems. Problems that I'll call life problems. Life problems are things like finding happiness and finding love and a sense of fulfillment in your life and a sense of purpose maybe in your career, etc. These are life problems. These are problems we all, rich or poor, encounter. Money won't solve these problems. But when you're broke, on top of, and I mean that literally and figuratively, on top of these problems, you've got money problems. And money problems are things like, how am I gonna pay rent? How am I gonna pay for food? I'm sick and can't afford to go to the doctor. I can't get a job because I can't drive to work. I don't have any nice clothes to wear to that job interview, it, and things like that. And I think the hardest part of, of money problems is that when you have money problems, they can drown out these other issues. Like, if you're feeling down in life, it's hard to work on your happiness when you literally might not know where you're gonna sleep. It's hard to like dwell too much on a relationship when you literally don't know where your next meal might come from. And you're not exactly worried about fulfillment at your job when you have no way to get there and you got no clothes to wear. And it, you get the idea. I go even further with this and say that these life problems, rich or poor, we all kind of try to solve them the same way and they're very hard to solve. What's the answer to finding happiness in life? I don't know, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lifetime to find happiness or love or a sense of fulfillment. But when you're facing these problems, the solution's right in front of you. Money, money solves all of these problems. And I think that makes these kinds of problems much harder to face because then the solution is just out of reach. Like in um, Indiana Jones, when he's trying to, Last Crusade, when he's trying to reach for the cup, like. So with that, if you are struggling financially and someone tells you money won't solve all of your problems, chances are the person saying that is someone who's never actually been broke. And then the story itself ends, and this is, this is written from the perspective of the journalist, because the journalist knew this guy who made the $1.2 million. Finding meaning, whether it's as a banker or a janitor, is difficult work. Usually life, rather than a business school classroom, is the place to learn how to do it. But that really hit home for me. I think the conclusion that this journalist made is not far off from what um, Tony Hawk said when he was on. Um, Key to happiness is doing what you love. And if it's not the most financially successful thing, it doesn't matter. Because you'll love going to work every day. And the ultimate, the ultimate is when you find a job that does pay you enough to cover your bills. A job that, a job that does satiate all of these all of these kind of basic needs. So you can spend your life actually focusing on things like being happy and finding love and making sure you're getting that fulfillment and sense of purpose, sense of purpose at work. Okay, give the article a read, it's, uh, it's wonderful. I'm, a, I'm happy to share with you that, well one, I'm sorry I haven't been posting, but I'm happy to share with you that the reason why I haven't been posting is that I'm working on something I'm working on something I wanted to do for a while, which is like a really long form, probably an hour, maybe even longer, movie for this YouTube channel. It's not like a branded thing, I'm not doing it for anybody but myself, but it is something I've been thinking about for a while, and two weeks ago I was like, screw it, let's do it, and I've devoted all of my energy and focus to making something that I think and I hope will be really meaningful for my channel. So if my schedule is even more irregular than usual, it's because I am trying to do something, I'm um, trying to do something new and big. Whoa. If you don't follow me on Twitter, you probably missed that I got a $275 ticket last week for running a red light on my boosted board. So I now stop at red lights and I'm much more cautious. Again, NYPD, I apologize and I have since paid the fine.